Brooklyn, Michigan, and clouds have rolled over the racetrack area. Strange. Riding along with Colin Brown now. Colin's really another one that's going to have a great future. He, one thing I like about Colin, he ain't afraid to pick up the phone and, and call somebody and say, hey, you know, I'm going to Michigan this weekend or, or Texas. And uh, what, what, what's some characteristics of this racetrack I need to look out for? And, and uh, seems like every other couple of weeks, and Colin gives me a call and I give him some pointers, and he's, he's really done a great job as well. And it was Travis Quapple driving for Roush Fenway that was finding victory lane all last season in that truck that now we see Colin Brown in. And, and Travel says, is this the race that Ford finally gets a win in 2008? Because they've been shut out. It, it could be. I, I, I think Mike Beam and, and the guys, especially at the Roush Fenway group, they, they've, they've really got a good handle on this two mile, mile and a half type racetrack. Uh, for us last year, this was the this was the the track that turned our season around. You know, we, we, we got it dialed in in practice and, um, you know, it, we actually had the, of those four wins, three of those were in the same truck. So we, we really worked on that mile and a half package. We got a good aero package and I believe that's the truck Collins actually running here. So, uh, you know, we spent the day at Ford yesterday at the world headquarters. So, you know, it's always a big deal to come to Detroit and you want to run good for your manufacturer. There's Mike Bean, Hal up there on top of the truck, the Brain Trust. You know, Mike does such a wonderful job with, with the truck series group. You know, he's 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 the crew chief on that six truck, but really he's the man in charge of the whole truck truck effort up there in Mooresville, North Carolina. And, and uh, you know, he's got so much experience and he's, you know, he's done cup racing in the past. And he just does a wonderful job. And they're, they're constantly in the wind tunnel and on the seven post with these trucks. And, you know, Ford really does a good job supporting this uh, truck series effort. You know, the thing I really liked about last year is you guys started out, had a great run at Daytona, was leading with about 100 feet before the start finish line I tried but to then, give you that race but, but then you, you struggled a little bit after that and and they got to work and when yeah. changed the bodies around a little bit and you know, went spent a lot of time in the wind tunnel and uh, and bam all of a sudden you guys start taking you're off. exactly right you know they they had a great combination working with Mark Martin they I think they won five or six races in in, uh, in 2006 and it just wasn't the package for me you know we went to a different uh, coil bind type package where which they was new to the team and uh, with that package, the trucks were way too loose, and we just had to go to work on the bodies, and they spent a lot of time cutting sheet metal off and spending time in the wind tunnel. And uh, it took us a few races, but we got it figured out. You know, I was talking to Mike and Hal last week, and from the end of the season last year to last week, they had been in the wind tunnel with the trucks 142 hours. That's amazing. Welcome back. Cool City Customs 200 practice continuing. Riding along with Colin Brown in the... Conway Freight number six Ford F-150. Guys, I want to ask, are you all surprised we're 30 minutes away from the end of practice and we haven't really seen any qualifying mock runs yet? Well, I'm not that surprised because qualifying in these Even guys this eyes, aren't, aren't, isn't as critical as it would be normally. There are 34 trucks entered for this race, so they know that everyone's going to make the race. They would love to have a great uh, starting position, but this is probably one of the bigger pit roads that we have. The pit stalls are fairly large, so it's not a deal where you really, really, you know, strive to get an opening. You can great. So I think right now these guys are more concerned with trying to get these trucks handling because they know they got a hundred lap race tomorrow, and that's what's critical, not not a two lap qualifying situation. I couldn't agree more. I think it's all about getting the the balance right, making sure you're not too tight or not too loose right now. Understanding where your splitter was. Do you want to know how frustrating those splitters are and getting them right? Look in Kyle Busch's eyes. Yeah. That's a team that has dominated this year, but it, they they can't find it. It won't. We can't get it on the right. We can't get it on the left. It isn't right. I keep telling Richie it isn't right. Yeah, so we don't care which one we 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 get on, but we, but we, we're yeah. not doing it right now. It'll work either way, but he was tore up over the fact that he, and that's what this stupid setup does to you. It just makes it frustrate you. You know it's right there, but you just can't put your hands on it. As frustrated as he was, he still finished second behind Ron Hornaday a week ago at Texas. Rain, but we're seeing some pre precipitation on the Wait, front stretch. Colin Brown said he's got rain on the windshield both ends. He used to run it in the rain though, right? That's true. Yeah, but he, he has some tread up usually on those tires when he does it. Doesn't seem to be affecting right now. I heard his foot. Never heard his foot come off the floorboard. Did you? No. The three and four, he had to roll out of it just a little bit, but it sounded like he was flat all the way through one and two. We'll see what he happens. You know, you see those little drops on our camera lens. When those things hit the windshield, though, it looks like buckets pouring down there. You know, it's, it's it doesn't take a whole lot to be a little bit disconcerting, as you see. Colin sounded like he ran that corner pretty well. Sounded like maybe it got a little tight, pushed up late. He might have. 
rolled off of it a little bit, but not a whole lot. 41.75 that time by. It's about a quarter of a second slower than his fastest lap, so I would say more than likely that was probably a, a qualifying mock-up run. Yeah, I think we're seeing a lot of the guys roll out and do those. And when you're doing a mock-up qualifying run and it's raining, that's just another fact, but these guys really want to know what these trucks are going to do in traffic. They want to, Colin Brown wants to know what this truck's going to do when he's behind that 60 truck of Terry Cook or behind maybe another truck. So I like the fact that they're out there running together to see what kind of situations they can simulate to what they may see tomorrow. Well, you know, we were over at Kansas a few weeks back, and we said this race is going to look a lot different like the, than the one last year that Colin Brown, or excuse me, uh, Eric Darnell won by 11 or 12 seconds driving away. We had a record number of cautions. There was action everywhere, and it was because of the new rule package that they have underneath the hood. I think all these guys have learned from that.